Good evening, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the General Government Committee meeting of January 4th, 2023. Uh, the time is now 6 p.m. And may we have a roll call, please. Councilmember Dennehy? Here. Councilmember Schmisher? Here. Councilmember B. Smith? Absent. Councilmember Stein? Here. Councilmember Tracy? Here. Councilmember Worthington? Here. <coughs> Mayor Pro Tim Hamrick? Here. Mayor Smith? Here. And I would say Happy New Year to everybody, but we were kind of hanging around last night <laughs> doing stuff, so I think we got, that, got that all the way. The, uh, and so tonight we're talking about the state of the city, uh, and this is both a look backwards and a look forwards, is that correct? That is correct. And uh, this is, you are going to pre be presenting? I will be presenting. <laughs> all right, take it away. All right. So, uh, you know, as Mayor Pro Tem Hammer mentioned, uh, you know, we've got a, a look at the 2022 accomplishments. Um, we're not going to go into every single goal for 2023, but we are going to be looking at the major projects and uh, what we have coming forward. Um, you know, as as everybody knows, 2022 was a huge year for the city. It's a, it was our 150th. Uh, we had a lot of great uh, celebrations throughout the year, uh, you know, with the, the key event being the April 2nd uh, festivities uh, with the fireworks and the city fair and everything else that happened. Uh, there was a lot of effort uh, both from city staff and community members and volunteers uh, that went into putting on the state uh, the uh, 150th and uh, certainly uh, appreciate all that. Um, just some of those events that were uh, covered during the 150th celebrations. Uh, we welcome several new businesses to Canyon City. Uh, Annalise is the new German restaurant. They'll be opening here at the beginning of February. Uh, Battleborn Barbecue. Uh, they have a couple of locations there. They'll be uh, running out of their food truck uh, moving forward. Uh, Cafe Ballet is uh, a new uh, coffee house uh, over there in the City Market Shopping Center. Uh, Fremont Public House opened last week uh, over at the St. Cloud. Natural Grocers was a big one. That was uh, a business that we had been trying to recruit here for several years, and uh, we were finally able to, to get them here in town. Uh, Yummy Thai opened up at the old Dairy Queen. And then a couple of new stores along Main Street squirreled away and the White Leopard home decor. Uh, building departments, uh, you know, was, uh, you know, had, uh, a, wasn't as busy as the previous year, but it was still a, still a busy year. Uh, they updated their, uh, you know, some of their software through ADG to allow for uh, more um, online lookups of, of permits and things like that. Uh, trying to reduce, and, you know, one of the things that we see from a uh, open records request, uh, a lot of them come through for the building department. So by uh, adding this additional software, uh, we made it so people can look up their own, uh, a lot of the things that they're, they're requesting through open records. Uh, <clears throat> 952 permits were issued. Uh, there were 140 residential plan reviews that includes uh, new homes to uh, garages and sheds. Uh, there are 608 licenses issued to uh, various contractors and uh, did over 2,100 inspections. Uh, we issued 46 certificates of occupancies last year. <clears throat> uh, city Clerk's Office, uh, they hosted the uh, annual Municipal Clerks uh, Association Conference. That was a, a huge event. There were a lot of people uh, from all over the state that got to visit Canyon City for the clerks conference and uh, spent a lot of time uh, not just at the uh, out there at the Abbey Event Center, but uh, they they did uh, you know a lot of activities downtown and we um, Cindy did a great job of getting people into stores and into businesses so they could experience Canyon City. Uh, from an economic development standpoint, um, you see the, the brand new refurbished uh, Fremont National Bank there, building there. Uh, got to meet uh, with Danny Kizak today to talk about um, you know, his, his building and some of the projects that they've, they've been working on. And, 
um, you know, very happy to have that, and their staff is very happy to be downtown and uh, being able to to visit the, the businesses and restaurants during the lunch hour and uh, really be part of the community and uh, much more connected than being up at, at the court itself. Uh, a couple of other things that, that came out of economic development last year, uh, we moved away from Bust Buxton Analytics to the retail coach and we're really starting to see a lot of uh, hopefully uh, fruit from, from that change. Uh, we're having a lot of discussions uh, with the retail coach. They're having a lot of discussions with different retailers and uh, restaurant concepts about Canyon City. And uh, again, that, that goes back to creating buzz around Canyon City. There's, there's a lot, of, there's a very positive buzz going on right now uh, with everything that we're doing from, uh, from a city standpoint. Uh, updated uh, the life safety grant and our facade grants, uh, World's End Brewing, uh, used that life safety grant award. Um, talking here a little bit about uh, Skyline Steel and doing the asbestos, not only the testing, but the abatement. Uh, going into 2023 uh, for Skyline Steel, we're working on uh, a demo uh, RFP to, to uh, do demolition of the site, the buildings that are over there. Uh, we're still working with Acorn Petroleum, trying to work on that land swap uh, so that we can start seeing more activity over there along the route from uh, we had uh, various uh, tax increment uh, finance projects uh, through uh, the urban renewal uh, area, and we just finished that meeting. Uh, but uh, TZAC uh, project, the Pharisee project, Hotel St. Cloud, um, we were expecting uh, some additional applications coming forward uh, for the Love's Travel Plaza, and then, of course, uh, the grants that are being offered for facade improvements and life safety. Um, you know, another big project here is, uh, that's mentioned down there, and you might not be able to see it because of the, the captions, is the new method uh, building. Uh, we're working with the state uh, on the new method uh, laundry building. Uh, we're, I think we've, we've gotten through a lot of the hurdles. We have a couple of things that we still have to do. So uh, city council will see uh, some activity uh, at the beginning of the new year regarding new method and uh, some of those requirements that uh, the state may be looking for from us to, to ensure that, um, you know, if they're, you know, if, if make sure that ground contamination doesn't make it into any of the um, wells and things like that. Well, Ryan, on, on the um, uh, tax increment financing and the urban renewal authority, uh, the, you know, the, some people have had concerns about those activities and the city being involved and creating an authority and is it uh, does it does it really pay off does it does it accomplish the goal uh, the goal is to encourage uh, a new economic development uh, that but for the urban renewal authority would not have happened and that's that's been our experience so far so. yeah you know it I take it a step further. The, the goal is blight remediation through economic development. Yes. So when you have uh, a building that's been covered with a, a facade that's 50 years old and there's a, a beautiful historic structure underneath and urban renewal helps uh, to close some of those gaps so that project can happen, um, you, you get blight remediation. Mm -hmm. When you have uh, an old car dealership that, you know, had, has some gaps in financing because of some of the uh, things that were going on with inflation last year and, and uh, you know some of those additional economic factors, you start seeing blight remediation, but at the same time, you're seeing that economic development happen. If you have a brand new building that's going to help generate more economic activity and hopefully create more jobs for the community. And, and, and really, just to, just to kind of maybe put a, a cherry on that Sunday, but, but there are measurable um observable uh, uh effects of the urban <clears throat> renewal authority that that we can that we have, that you have listed some of that have that are and will be beneficial for our community absolutely and i think the other thing uh you know especially when you're talking about urban renewal <laughs> and how tax increment financing work works you know one of the strategies that we're taking uh, as a community and as an urban renewal board is um, 
you know, we're doing tax increment on a reimbursement basis. So if the if, if there is no positive increment generated, um, you know, there's there's no reimbursement going out. So a, a lot of that has to do with you know show us that you're actually going to do it and then you actually go out and do it and you create that increment and that is where that benefit comes from. So. I don't want to say there's no risk, but the, the risk has been minimized uh, from an urban renewal standpoint from the city standpoint. Can you give us a little update on the and Petroleum? <laughs> uh, Rick has uh, reached out to them earlier this week, um, trying to get an update on, from them on where they are at. Um, so uh, we we've had some discussion we know that they are doing some due diligence in the background they're talking to some of the same people at the state that we've reached out to um, and we didn't know that they had reached out to them so we know that there's some of those discussions happening in the background um, from the due diligence standpoint um, we're waiting to to hear back from them because we we've not heard from them directly that they've had these discussions we just know that they've had those discussions by uh, the conversations that we're having with the Division of Oil um, Public Safety, and we're we're continuing to move forward with our uh, land up on uh, Elm and uh, <coughs> Oak Creek Grade as far as rezoning within the county, and there are several steps that we're going to have to take on on that site as well. Mm -hmm. So we're we're moving forward to prepare that for the land swap. So. Um, you know, assuming they they move forward, it's it's all um, ready to go for them. It, mm -hmm. it should be pretty turnkey for them. Um, from a zoning standpoint, um, you know, we have special review uses up there. So um, going through the exercise of changing the zoning, even if the acorn deal falls through, uh, it's probably a good step to to have the appropriate zoning within within the county anyway. I mean, it's been a little while because we we all talked to him. Is it? I mean, is the time we can give him another poke. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. Like you said, uh, Rick Harmon, our economic development manager, he reached out to him earlier this week. So okay. that that was that poke. Gotcha. Um, so Rick's on it. He will. Uh, you know, he'll continue to follow up with him until years years back. Then. Uh, from an engineering public works standpoint, uh, we uh, Kim Swearingen left the the city last year. We hired uh, Leo Evans to be our new public works director, professional engineer coming <laughs> to us from uh, Muskegon, Michigan. He actually starts on Monday, uh, so he's uh, he is in town. He's getting family settled, so uh, very excited for him to to start work and and pick up uh, the engineering side and the, the public works side. Uh, Rhodes Avenue, uh, the project has been going on for just about a year now. Um, we are, you know, expecting that that project will wrap up um, March, April time time frame. Um, we've got, uh, you know, a lot. There were a lot of projects that happened last year. We saw a lot of utilization for our 50 50 sidewalk replacement program. Um, you know, we did our CMAC uh, paving project for Fort Mile Lane and then uh, completed the alleyway back behind uh, the 500 block of Main Street. What, what is CMAC? What does that um, so, I can't remember what the C stands for, uh, mitigation air quality. Um, they, it was a federal program to try and reduce dust and particles within gotcha. uh, within communities. So it was and all that stuff. From the federal government, it was comprehensive. So it paid comprehensive. Two A streets. Uh, last year we did Eighth uh, Street, uh, Fairview, Bar, Ellison, Yale Place, to Fifteenth Street, and the design of Reynolds. Um, you know, one of the challenges that we had last year was a lot of uh, availability of products, uh, price inflation, and escalations uh, hitting a lot of our projects. Uh, we do have um, councils already awarded the bid for the uh, Reynolds Avenue water main project that that is already underway. Uh, so Reynolds Avenue will be paved, um, you know, for 2023, and 
um, on, on, on the streets, uh, something, you know, now, now that we have a, a, you know, public works director, when, when 2A was passed, there was, there were um, essentially talking points generated by the city uh, and the, all the people that were working on that project saying, you know, well, we have 99 miles of road and 60% of them are the, and what I would suggest is that, uh, you know, not anything like this quarter or something, but, but at some point we probably need to revisit those talking points and update to be able to, to because we're gonna we're gonna be yeah. coming up to this at some point, and it would be good to have those uh, an update to those uh, statistics that we were yeah. using. Yeah, and we uh, Christy more so and and the engineering department they they do update those as uh, the uh, at the end of the year, and we have the project page on on the website, um, you know, talking about um, the streets that have gone from. Uh, poor condition or not passable to uh, you know 100. Uh, so we we do have a lot of that data uh, readily available, and we can pull that together when, when needed. Is the map up to date? Uh, the we um, had a discussion about that about a month ago. Christy's working on updating the entire website right now. And that was one of the things that she was working on with uh, Mike Pilo, our GIS specialist, um, yeah. on updating that map. So um, if it is not already updated with the uh, streets that were completed in 2022, it should be soon uh, when she uh, does the refresh. When those, sorry, go ahead. when those roads are updated, the streets, do we put signs up? Kind of like, do you see the state highway, you know, these... These roads improved thanks to yes, we do. Okay, because I couldn't. I thought I'd seen them, but I couldn't remember because yeah. it's like people need to see it. They're not ginormous. So but, they're like, yeah, yeah. There were, there were signs down by the middle middle school. I thought there were, but I couldn't remember because that's a. There are. I'll, I'll double check to make sure that we've relocated them to the new streets that were completed. But yeah, we do have signs for those. Looks like the map is updated. So, she's <laughs> she's on spot. <laughs> Uh, our facilities departments, uh, you know, this is a great crew for the city. It, it's it's two folks that, that work here. Uh, their office is here in City Hall. They do so many projects in house that uh, you know normally uh, before we had this this crew on board, you know, we would have to hire contractors to to come in and do a lot of this work. Um, you know, they. You know they do the flooring for the city and, and the museum. We you know prior to them we we hired the contractors to do that. They helped with the demolition of the police annex for phase two. Um, you know they they installed the banners. So we have these huge banners outside City Hall, right out here on the Highway 50 side. Uh, they were the ones that were out there on the ladder <laughs> installing those things. Uh, so you know they they're very. They're very uh, a very good crew. They do a great job, and uh, they they save the city a lot of money because we are able to do a lot of these projects in house. And very creative too. They do a lot of problem solving. They do, and they have a good time doing it. At home, I learned a lot of construction skills at, at my construction site, <laughs> and I'm kind of proud of them. And I thought maybe someday I could work with Dirk and Dave, and they're like, yeah, this is what I'm fun. <laughs> <laughs> they are characters. <laughs> uh, from a human resources standpoint, uh, Ivy Morris left the human resources department and we hired Butch Batchelder to, to join us uh, as our new HR director. Uh, so Butch is uh, getting his feet under him. Uh, one of his big projects that he's looking forward to doing is, uh, is a leadership academy for the city. Uh, he implemented something similar when he was with the city of Pueblo. So uh, you know, he's, he, that's one of the things that he's looking forward to uh, working towards in 2023. Um, you know, we implemented phase two of the, the 2021 pay structure and pay philosophy. Um, did a lot of trainings uh, last year uh, for, for city staff and uh, I foresee a lot of training, you know, moving forward, trying to just keep pace with, uh, well, sometimes even with our, our legislature to, okay. to make sure that we're uh, staying current with the things that are changing at, at a state level, not uh, standing for the federal level. 
uh, but uh, continuing to work on uh, you know improving our recruiting and, and getting uh, folks into the pipeline. Uh, IT is always busy, um, you know, upgrading our networks. Uh, last year there was a cybersecurity event for uh, the county um, that triggered a lot of things on our side. We were already doing a lot of things from a cybersecurity standpoint to to protect the city systems. Uh, but that uh, kicked some things into overdrive and uh, really, <clears throat> again, a lot of training on um, you know, keeping that the network secure, trying to stay away from phishing and, and other types of scams that are out there that try to trick you into <laughs> clicking on links or downloading something you're not supposed to download and it infiltrate, infiltrates the system. So um, our IT department does a really good job of that and they're working on, on ways to com uh, compartmentalize uh, our machines as well. So if a single machine gets infected, it gets cut off from the, the system before anything can spread. So there, there's a lot of really positive stuff that the, the IT department is doing. Um, one of the big projects that uh, they will be doing in 2023, there's a lot of software projects in 2023, uh, but I think the one that everybody's probably happy about is uh, a change to the Microsoft Exchange server and a new email and calendar system. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, to get away from Zebra. And, and I must, I must say, Elijah has become one of those very tricky people. You know. <laughs> yeah, he's on the uh, speed dial. Wow, <laughs> uh, well, the oh, from a from a <laughs> sending out the fake. Oh, uh, phishing um, messages. Um, <laughs> we, we send out internal uh, phishing scams to, to test yeah. and make sure our training is working. And, uh, and from time to time, it does catch folks. Right. It's, it's really important in the, any organization. I know in some that I've been in in the past, they would just regularly do that kind of thing. So you didn't just totally forget about mm -hmm. paying attention to it. So it's good that he, all the, that they're doing is really good. Uh, at, at the end of the presentation, I'll talk about a, a little bit more about some of the big IT projects that we have <laughs> coming up. There, there are quite a few. Uh, the, the next two slides, library and the museum. The, the library and the museum, uh, they did a, a lot of work uh, for the 150th. They, they uh, created a lot of programming. They really stepped up to, to help with those 150th events, especially the Feature Fridays. And uh, just a, a huge kudos to both of those teams. Those teams do a great job with mm -hmm. limited resources and limited staffing. Mm -hmm. And um, their entire teams were phenomenal this whole year. Yeah. Um, and they're, they're always doing community events like with the bridge and trunk or treat. Uh, they, you know, for those who might be listening online, they have a lot of great programming as well. They bring in. Uh, Chautauquas, and they bring in uh, live actors that, that are portraying historical figures uh, to use, and, you know, these these great training, not trainings, but just educational programming, and uh, they're, they're huge assets to the community. Uh, museum and History Center, uh, they, you know, uh, Lisa Stutz, our museum director, also is our, our key staff liaison for our certified local government, which is the city's historic preservation group. Uh, we dedicate, uh, designated two properties last year to the historic, as historic properties. Um, and there's a big announcement that will be coming hopefully within the next week or so from the museum. And so uh, I'm just gonna queue it up there. Um, so uh, hopefully we'll have some new uh, paleontology Logical information to share uh, here in the near future. <laughs> uh, it's a big year for parks as well. So we we did the grand opening for the Royal Cascade. Uh, that was the trail that connects the Royal Gorge Park to the Tunnel Drive Trail. Um, lots of uh, use. I've heard a lot of pos positive. Uh, Feedback regarding uh, regarding that trail, um, we implemented an online reservation system for uh, the campground up at Gorge, the East Ridge Campground, and that was a that was a big success. Um, we had uh, great utilization for that and uh, made um, made for a very very smooth operation up there. 
Um, one of our uh, 150th uh, activities was installing a new sign up at Temple Canyon. Um, and you see that that featured there um, shows up on a later slide, but that was uh, uh, designed and then rendered uh, into that sign uh, by uh, Christy Gotham, our public information officer. So uh, again, a lot it took a took a village to to put on the, the 150 events, and everybody came together to to uh, really make this happen last year and uh, can't, can't speak uh, enough about the staff and, and how they always step up for, for all these things and things that may not necessarily be in their job description, but they're, they're willing to help and, uh, and make sure that we get there. Just a question on open space. Um, has there been any updates on the Clark Station property recently? Good question. Um, I actually had an email from John V. Hill at Black Hills wanting to set up a, a time to sit down and talk about the, the car station property. So uh, that is something that will be a 2023 uh, goal and action item, uh, trying to uh, get our hands around uh, Clark Station and um, figuring out what, uh, what Black Hills has done uh, from a cleanup standpoint and how that aligns with our future plans and um, when, you know, whether or not we want to move forward with uh, taking ownership of that. So those those are all things uh, that will be on the horizon for 2023. Is there any independent um, research or uh, for the ground? <laughs> so I, I can speak to that. There was a phase one, a phase two environmental assessment, a phase one, identifies areas where contamination may be. Phase two goes out and uh, looks samples, uh, collects environmental samples to, to verify or uh, prove that there is no contamination present. That also included uh, drilling water wells on the property. Uh, and so that was done by an independent third party contractor under uh, Black Hills direction, but uh, at the also being reviewed by the Colorado Depart uh, Department of Public Health and Environment. Mm -hmm. and so there have been a lot of eyes looking at it. Now, that's that was in, prior to the, the, the last round of cleanup that they've done. They've done a similar report. I haven't seen that report yet, but yeah. it should be it should be similar to the, the previous. Yeah, and that's, that will be the meeting and the discussion. So we, we know they've done additional work. Uh, we know CDPHE mm -hmm. has signed mm -hmm. off on what they have done, and there's uh, you know, materials management plans that have been updated and all of those types of things. So, um, you know, the, I think the, the big question moving forward is the work that they've done and the work that, you know, the work that we want to see happen over there as far as the river corridor master plan goes, do those things align and uh, is there additional work that, that may need to be done or not? Because you don't want to be, you hopefully are not limited as to what can go there. Well, it's limited. Future. <laughs> it is limited. I bet. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. Because of what is in the ground. Yeah. We're well aware of those limitations. But horizontal. It has to be horizontal. Yeah. What? Yeah. No That's second and third story cellars. Daycare <laughs> <laughs> centers. <laughs> but there, there are also limitations because it's in the floodway and limitations because of all the utility easements that are on that property. Yeah. From a from a building envelope standpoint, but really there there are no, a lot of opportunities for vertical construction. Okay. Thank you. But there's a the I believe that the community came together and had a lot of public input on what could be feasible there and what could work within those limitations. And it's really exciting what the vision and what the plan oh, is just for that. Space. Oh, you just bought a lot of yeah. Oh, absolutely. So the master plan is on the website. Okay. Um, the community did participate in that. It, it includes parking because as the river corridor gets developed, we're going to need a lot more parking. Of course, open space, a <clears throat> uh, boat on ramp, off ramp, possibly like a high scale RV park, which is intriguing because that was put in there because that way it could, that could offset the cost of operating it. So it would be a self sustaining um, okay. So that's the best part that went. It, it is. Yeah. And I, you know, I think, you know, like I said, for, <laughs> for this year, there'll be a lot more discussion about park station property. I I hope that as part of that that we will 
have more ways to engage the community as it gets farther along, more environmental analysis completed, et cetera. Seems like it'd be good to get the community back involved a little bit in that too. Sanjay, I think the environmental analysis has been, has been completed, including cleanup. So, so I think those are check boxes. Mm -hmm. but, but I understand your your, your point. yeah. Just to kind of bring the community up to date, I guess. Sure. Yeah. Way. So, and then, you know, there's there, there's a lot of interested parties. Uh, RG Rio uh, being the, probably the the biggest one about what's going to happen with the site and what are some of the in water improvements that can go along with improvements of the dirt uh, Clark Station property. Uh, so I think as we move forward, there will be a lot more public mm -hmm. engagement around that because um, <clears throat> from a from a whitewater standpoint, there's there's huge opportunities and how you tie that into that property. Um, you know, it, you know we, we saw the Canoe Nationals uh, come to Canyon City and you know, what are what are other opportunities for those types of events that we can bring here uh, as that white white water park and white water features continue to grow along the river? I don't mind taking a few events from other communities. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, from a planning and zoning standpoint, we uh, received uh, uh, the APA Colorado Merit Award for Picture Canyon City 2040. Uh, that was our comprehensive plan and UDC update, uh, Unified Development Code. Uh, we, we are planning on applying for the national uh, award this year as well. So uh, that's, that's one of the big things on, on Patrick's list. Uh, we've had uh, several different projects that uh, went through uh, planning and zoning last year, Loves and the Abbey being two of the, the largest ones. Um, uh, did updates to the development assistant packets and um, you know updates to, to the packets that we have out in, out in the foyer for, of uh, City Hall. Chief, this is the police department. Do you want to cover some of your highlights or since you're here? Sure. Um, Big year for us. Uh, we expanded our leadership capacity with Commander <laughs> Bell graduating from uh, the prestigious FBI National Academy uh, recently this past December. Um, UTV permits went into effect uh, in August. Uh, we have a total of 85 permits issued. Um, community Service Officer Unit handled over a combined uh, 1,200 incident, incidents in 2022, um, and our policy and training manual was updated and presented before City Council. Uh, we established a new agreement with Sylvista Mental Health, um, and we talked about that uh, just before the holidays, uh, expanding our co-responder program, and uh, uh, so we served the front and back half of uh, the week, <coughs> and we established an auto aid agreement with Fremont County Sheriff's Office to allow city's PD officers to work on uh, problems crossing jurisdictional lines um, near the city, uh, such as routine river walk patrols with our mountain bikes and uh, ATVs. Um, in fact, we, uh, we we worked on a homeless encampment underneath the four, uh, four mile bridge uh, just recently um, and uh, cleared out uh, some activity there. Uh, Courtney McAvoy was nominated by Commander Van Dyke um, for the Mini Harding Award for Overcoming Adversity uh, with uh, from Fremont's Exceptional Women Group. Uh, and, and Chief Connect, Kevin, yes, just sir. let me interrupt you just a little bit. On the previous side, you said there was a bullet point that said we, we had received dozens of calls concerning the UTV licensing. Uh, and what was what was the flavor of the calls? Were they were they concerns about noise or were they just questioning just how do I get a permit? Exactly. And, the, the process. Has there, has there been much uh, concern on the part of our community about? You know, we're not receiving. Uh, in, in fact, I have very few of any calls, uh, you know, related to the UTVs. Uh, enforcement action is very low. In that I've gotten some. Have you gotten some? Yeah. Some complaints? Yes, I think I forwarded you one of those. I'll forward it to you again. Okay, but yeah. the, but but just but but a few. It was it was it was minimal. This one particularly concerned uh, a person on a four wheeler with a bunch of kids hanging off the sides, going around town. So uh, can we say? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, you know, yeah, I know that we didn't have to afford that to me. We, we certainly follow, follow up, especially with our children. Was that horrible? Yeah, that's just the only two wide out. Have there been um, complaints on seat click fix? We, we've received a, a few, pro, uh, I believe. Uh, I, I've had some conversations. See click fix. See click fix. Um, you know, I've had some conversations with some community members about UTV noise, and then, um, but it really uh, devolved into uh, bikes, motorcycles, more so than UTVs. It might be helpful when we hit, I guess, maybe the one year anniversary around August to just kind of pull all of the stats together mm -hmm. and actually talk about it at yeah. the general government or vision committee. We, we do yeah. plan. Yeah. I, I, I'll have to show you the videos on my phone because it couldn't be downloaded and forwarded to you. Okay. So maybe before we leave. Sure. <clears throat> So we've continued with our purge project. Um, uh, Courtney and uh, Kim, uh, both in our uh, at the PD. Kim, our digital evidence technician, and Courtney, our lead uh, records technician. Um, this this problem has festered for many, many, many years, um, and they have managed to go through uh, fifty three boxes of records that have. Met and, and determined that they've met the retention schedules and, and we have shredded those boxes. Um, this is a culmination of, uh, I don't remember off the top of my head, Ryan, it must have been several hundred hours of, of overtime uh, that these two committed uh, to come in on their, their days off and, and work through these processes. We have, um, over a couple hundred boxes that uh, date back to the 60s. So um, they are they are making very good time. Um, and as, as our processes, uh, as they establish the processes, they, they're picking up the tempo. Um, so we are hopeful that we will be halfway through this uh, project by the end of this calendar year um, and well on our way to uh, Finally, getting a uh, getting some control over that that issue. I uh, think individuals like, would be able to get them to come and go through some of the our basements and things. Like that. <laughs> and maybe I may may start a new company. Yeah, <laughs> is this fleet freeing up a lot of floor space for us? Well, right now most of that is in connexes, mm -hmm. um, but yes, we're we're clearing up spaces in the connex. Right. Absolutely. Um, so our tip with a cop, a tip of cop raised $3,500 for shop with a cop. Um, and uh, overall, we raised over $30,000 for our shop with a cop event. And again, I, I briefed council on uh, just before Christmas. Um, we were able to take about 130 children shopping. Um, and the, uh, the, of course, the, the positive and residual effects there are, are you know, uh, um, overwhelming. Um, but we were also able to bring in um, nearly 200 people from our community um, to help us in that endeavor. Uh, so it's just a huge, huge, huge uh, community engagement project. Uh, June 17th was uh, part of that fundraising with our first annual tee up for the Blue Golf Tournament, raised about $13,000. And we participated in a number of community engagement events, including Coffee with a Cop, with the Bridge, Trunk or Treat, Star Point Basketball Game, the 150th celebration. Uh, obstacles with the popo, um, yeah, just all kinds of things. Wonderful opportunities to get out there and, and meet folks. And, and there's a, a list of uh, several of them. And uh, and this January, uh, I guess we'll include that in next year's uh, State of the City, but we're going to host our first uh, new Thanksmas uh, celebration, which um, with, our, with our fundraising endeavors, we were able to fund a members benefit fund and uh, we're going to cater the dinner and a party for all the office personnel and our retirees. Uh, I'm very, very, very proud of all of our folks at the PD. We, we, uh, <clears throat> the commitment to service excellence, the commitment to our community is overwhelming um, and I just could not be prouder of it. And chief, a statistic for you, 
uh, 200 people participating in shop with a cop is over 1% of the community. That's huh, that's huge. I've never, I've that's never huge. thought of it in that, that oh. light, uh, Mayor Pro Town. That's that is. And you can see here reflecting on all the uh, all the services that we've provided to the city, the total man hours about 850 and uh, average cost is about uh, $30,216 uh, uh, that we have uh, provided in terms of uh, police services. Thank you for putting that together. Yeah. That's a really big deal to have that, especially when we have um, agencies asking for the city to give more, and this is really important to people. So this is this is a big chunk of what we're well, making. I mean, there's a lot more access. This, the city is is certainly making its fair share of investment there. And it's wonderful to have your presence at these activities. Yeah. It's such a positive. Well, it, it, it's my honor. It's uh, everybody, uh, every member in the agency's honor. Um, like I said, I I couldn't be prouder of our folks. Thank you, Chief. Yes, sir. Um, you know, Public Information Officer Christy Gotham uh, talked a little bit about what she did previous, uh, some of the things that she did last year uh, previously. <laughs> but uh, you know, she she does a great job uh, trying to get our information out there. She monitors all of our social media accounts and is responding to those social media comments and. Um, you know, we, one of our big uh, things is trying to get more people signed up for our e-notify system, uh, increasing followers on Facebook. So you, you'll see uh, a thousand new followers on Facebook uh, to bring us up to 5.2. It's about a 25% increase in followers. Um, so uh, that the uh, subscription for the e-notify system, that's the that's the email system uh, or the, the website. You can sign up for notifications about the, um, the public can sign up, you know, if it's uh, planning commission or city council, you can sign up for all the notifications. You pick, and it's your menu, you pick what you want to be notified on. So um, really trying to make sure that we have that connection back to the community. So when we do send out those notifications, people that want them are getting them. Do you know, oh, go ahead. Do you know, um, I know you mentioned the percentage increase on Facebook. Do you know roughly what the percentage increase on the e-notify has been since Christie's kind of renewed push to, to let people know about it? You know, I, I don't know. I'd have to talk to Christy about that and see how many category subscriptions. Um, you know, there are so many categories, you know, th that's not individual people. So that, you know. That's you know gotcha. signing up for five or six different categories, gotcha. um, but but we could look into that. Yeah, because you know, I mean she does a lot more than what's on that list. Absolutely, including <laughs> she's probably um she's probably she's one probably of the watching right now. Yeah, participants <laughs> on there, and so if there's Facebook comments, you know during mm -hmm. the meeting, and if there's questions, she leads them to links and answers mm -hmm. those questions, and she's really <laughs> also. Just like all the other departments, super awesome for the 150th and many, many days. Our uh, streets and the, the stormwater, uh, referring to the back truck, um, you know, cleaned uh, 53 manholes, 284 inlet boxes, uh, over 7.6 miles of culvert was cleaned. Uh, 8.62 bobtail truck loads of material was removed. 18. 18.62, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, street sweep, um, 1,005 tons of material hauled off from our street sweeper. Uh, nearly 4,000 potholes repaired. That's uh, almost 700 more than last year. Um, and you know, again, you can you can report those uh, via C click fix, and um, typically we have somebody out there within forty eight hours to to get those potholes repaired. So um, those Excuse are the next one. I was yeah, going to. <laughs> our uh, our leaf pickup program sixty seven over sixty seven bobtail loads of. Uh, of leaves uh, were were taken uh, from the community. Uh, 288 uh, yards or 57 bobtail loads actually went to a resident that requested for, for composting. So that saved the community quite a bit because 
we didn't have to take those to the bank. Wow. Um, and then we did our own concrete replacement on Orchard, um, you know, 404 yards uh, of material for the or 404 yards um, of, of Orchard. And then 92 utility cuts were patched by the streets department. So you don't want to go There were 6,000, there were 6,000 gallons of gum gum in a mile on the street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's going to last your lifetime. It is going to last us a lifetime. Our high head, low head uh, project pump station, uh, low head uh, project was actually completed. Uh, we received our rebate check. It was over $40,000 from Black Hills uh, for that project. Um, and, you know, there, there's a lot that water department does. It's more than just these four items, um, you know, including uh, our, our backflow program and getting that top back up. Um, we uh, currently uh, are completing a water loss uh, study, you know, so all the water that goes into the system after it's treated, uh, we're looking at how much, how much do we actually lose through the process and it's less than 5%. Mm -hmm. So, That's really uh, good. you know, we, we've got a lot of uh, really good things that our water department does. Um, you know, water confidence report was a, a, another strong report this year. Um, so. And um, then also the huge repair effort that happened in, was it May? Um, near Tunnel Drive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that was a that was a big project in the past years, uh, repairing the uh, the backflow drain. The, you're you're going to have to talk to Travis about about uh, putting on letting us know the good things he's been doing. <laughs> Another thing he's been doing, kind of under the radar, I think, is uh, his own records retention project and organizing records that uh, for many years up at the water treatment yeah. plant. That's that's a that's a big step forward for any organization. <laughs> Uh, obviously, we had our 2022 election and all of the items that we had on the uh, ballot passed. So, um, you know, updating our open meetings, uh, all of their as employees, uh, the removal of parks and uh, playgrounds, uh, needing of votes uh, to be accepted, and then uh, updating the court uh, penalty violation uh, language. <laughs> For 2023 major projects, uh, clock tower design, uh, those bids actually close today. So we'll start evaluating uh, those RFPs. Uh, the community broadband project, uh, Catherine's finishing up the red line of that contract. Um, we should have that red line out uh, or back to us on Friday so we can uh, start finish up those negotiations with our selected vendor. Uh, I mentioned when we were talking about IT and software, uh, we've got a court management system, an ERP financial management system, the records management system for the PD. Uh, those are all projects that uh, are on the slate for this year. And uh, some of those projects are being funded through the city. Some of those projects are being funded through uh, CRCA, the Combined Communication Center. Uh, so um, uh, IT and city staff, uh, in various departments will be very busy this year uh, updating some of our softwares. And you know these these softwares, the software that we're replacing is um, in many cases is antiquated. Uh, water department uh, is another one, the SCADA system replacement. Um, you know, a lot of these are, are antiquated. Uh, when we were talking about SCADA system uh, earlier or later last year, um, you know, that, that system had been in place uh, with the water treatment plant. I think we said 1997 or 1998 is, is when it uh, was installed. And, uh, and you know, they've stopped making uh, compatible equipment for it at this point. So uh, these are all very much needed projects, and they do need to move forward. Um, so that we, we have quite a few uh, of these types of projects in the, in the hopper for 2023. Uh, from a public works standpoint, um, taking another look at the East Access Control Plan for Highway 50, uh, we have the lighting project. That's another one that's uh, currently in legal review uh, for along Highway 50. Uh, that's to add lighting there along the Abbey. We have a lot of pedestrian and bicycle accidents with vehicles there. Uh, it's very dark at night. You can't see uh, those pedestrians there. 
so that lighting project will help with that. Um, we've got our Highway 50 pedestrian crossing between 1st and 15th Street. That will go up to bid next year as well. So um, we have a lot of projects that we've kind of had um, in the hopper for, for a while. A lot of these will be moving forward here in 2023. Could you share a little bit more when you say you've taken another look at the East Access Control Plan in 2023? What does that look like? What are you envisioning um, for that process? That's a great question. Um, part of that, you know, waiting, um, you know, we're, we're going to have to rely on Leo when he gets here and get, get up to speed on that. Um, we're going to, uh, and that's going to be some discussion between uh, myself, our public works department, and CDOT on uh, on that, uh, what that's going to look like. So um, when when it didn't pass council back in 2018, uh, it was put on the shelf. Uh, I think the direction we had from uh, from council of one of the things was that uh, we want to go back and uh, the, the process that we used for the West Access Control Plan uh, was uh, very well received. So using that similar type of process to go back and go through the uh, the East Access Control Plan again. Did that process include a lot of community engagement and then the that the businesses that would be affected? Or yeah, so we, we had, um, well, and we did that previously. So, you know, there, there was, um, you know, all the businesses were notified the first time. But um, I think the big difference between the West Access Control Plan and East Access Control Plan is that we made every discussion was a public meeting mm -hmm. and city council was, it was open to all city council members mm -hmm. and we, we published everyone as if it were a city council work session. And one of, one of the things that made the West Access Control Plan uh, more successful was the fact that that every business owner was individually contacted mm -hmm. in the planning area. So that was along the along the highway. We'll so have that one on one sit downs and the staff listened to them and <laughs> the accommodations. Although I mean we'll find out when we actually execute the project how well, well they, uh, they've signed off. Uh, yeah. they've they've returned their but when it really happens <laughs> <that's> when it <laughs> really happens. short <laughs> There's, there's a saying about silk purses and sow's ears. Um, let's see, can't tell you in turn. Yeah. Uh, the parks facility look relocation. So moving the uh, the park shop from Centennial Park up to the uh, public works shop on Ninth Street. Uh, that's one uh, one of the big projects. Uh, we're continuing to look for grant funding for that because. Uh, it is an expensive project, but I do think from a um, operation and riverfront corridor uh, standpoint, um, you know, getting that uh, shop relocated is is a big step for uh, what we what we plan for the future there down there on the river. Would you mind us speaking a little bit more about the multimodal master plan? Yeah, multimodal master plan was a, a grant. Uh, it's grant funded. Uh, <laughs> And that, that's looking at um, you know, all forms of transportation throughout the city. So bike, walk, uh, vehicle. And um, so that, that will be a huge public project, uh, engagement project as well for, for next year. And again, that will be a, that's one of the ones I have at the top of the list to talk to Leo about when he's here next week. So the funding has already been secured? Right? The funding is secured, yes. Actually, I signed the grant paperwork today. Wonderful. How are we doing on the Main Street improvement grant? <clears throat> uh, that one, I think that one, we're still waiting on the grant paperwork for that one. Uh, and that's the last slide. Uh, like I said, that, that's not everything that we're doing in 2023, but those are the big ones. And I'm sure I missed a couple big ones too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, is this available on the web or uh, I get, send it to Cindy this afternoon, but we can we can publish it as well. And, and could you um, send us each copy of it? Mm -hmm. really yes. 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 Yeah. I really wish I had that for the videos. Yeah. <laughs> but I can use this content a lot. It's really nice <laughs> to have this like readily available. So when you get the so what's happening at the city? <laughs> well, let me tell you, I've got 23 slides for you. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's start at the beginning. 
See, it's my turn next time. And that thought went through my head, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Wonderful, thank you. Yeah, yeah, everyone on the staff. Answer. We have a great team and we really appreciate everyone's hard work and been able to witness just the passion they have and the pride they have in serving in the camps. Absolutely. I think uh, we we got a great team and they, they do it because they love the community. And you're getting Leo instead of uh, track shoes, so we can hit the ground running. <laughs> he's he's trust me, he's got a project I already know that's coming from citizens. Already, you know, and I, you know, I know there's just. Yeah, you know, uh, to, to go to your question, Kathy, um, you know, we, we actually brought Leo in a little bit early on a part time basis to review uh, the Abbey application uh, because it was something that he was going to inherit. So uh, we wanted to make sure he had eyes on it from the beginning. So smart. Uh, we, we did bring him in uh, at least. Uh, uh, on a part-time basis to start reviewing some of those things and working with our contract engineer as well. So, um, you know, we're, we're planning on uh, hitting the ground running, but you know, we also recognize that moving from Michigan to Colorado, there's going to be a lot of a lot of stuff that's going to be different that he's going to have to get his arms around. And then it'd be wonderful at our um, our weekly meetings to have a chance to down with you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Probably Butch too. Yeah. Um, I, I don't have anything else to present. Hey, thank you. Any further questions or comments or discussion? I just feel like we should like all put our hands and circle and say, let's get cool. <laughs> and we are going right into 2023. Right. We're there. We're there. We're there. <laughs> Maybe we should all get crashes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that, Ryan. That was that was very important very and, uh, and and helpful. Yeah, and helpful. Sorry, I do have one, Alabama. <clears throat> one thing that I don't think I saw in the twenty twenty three with balance scorecard is that something that you're envisioning, kind of reporting, like being able to report against for the twenty twenty four spring of the city. Yeah, it is. Okay, and with that, we're adjourned. Awesome. Thank you.